Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. So my name is Pramod Thorat and this is another Komsha A plus core to exam practice test series. So this part is also very helpful to pass the core to exam. So this practice test has 10 questions. So before you get start, don't forget to subscribe this channel to see more video like this. So let's go to the questions. So question number one. So which of the following must be maintained throughout the forensic evidence life cycle when dealing with a piece of evidence? Option A is acceptable use. Option B is a chain of custody. Option C is a security policy. Option D is a information management. So let's check the correct answer for this question. And the correct answer for this question is B, chain of custody. So let's move to the next question, question number two. And the question number two is a technician is configuring a SOHO device company policy dictates that static IP addresses cannot be used. The company wants the server to maintain the same IP address at all times. So which of the following should the technician use? Option A is a DHCP reservation. Option B is a port forwarding. Option C is a DNSA record. Option D is a NAT. So let's check the correct answer for this question. And the correct answer for this question is option A, DHCP reservation. So let's go to the next question, question number three. The security software was accidentally uninstalled from all servers in the environment. So after requesting the same version of the software be reinstalled, the security analyst learns that a change request will need to be filled out. So which of the following is the best reason to follow the change management process in the scenario? So option A is owners can be notified a change is being made and can monitor it for performance impact. Option B is a risk assessment can be performed to determine if the software is needed. Option C is end users can be aware of the scope of the change. Option D is a rollback plan can be implemented in case the software breaks and applications. So let's check the correct answer for this question. And the correct answer for this question is option A. Owners can be notified a change is being made and can monitor it for performance impact. So let's go to the next question, question number four. Question number four is uh, once weekly a user needs Linux to run a specific open source application that is not available for the currently installed Windows platform. The user has limited bandwidth throughout the day. So which of the following solutions would be the most efficient, allowing for parallel executions of the Linux application and Windows applications? So let's check the options for this question. So option A is install and run Linux and the required application in a past cloud environment. Option B is install and run Linux and the required application as a virtual machine install under the Windows OS. Option C is use a swappable drive bay for the boot drive and install each OS with application on its own drive. Swap the drives as needed. Option D is set up a dual boot system by selecting the option to install Linux alongside Windows. So let's check the correct answer for this question. And the correct answer for this question is option P, install and run Linux and required application as a virtual machine installed under the Windows OS. So let's go to the next question. So question number five is a user attempts to open some files, but a message appears stating that the files are encrypted. The user was able to access these files before without receiving this message and no one changes have been made within the company. So which of the following has infected the computer? Option A is a crypto miner. Option B is a phishing. Option C is a ransom pair. Option D is a keylogger. So let's check the correct answer for this question. And the correct answer for this question is C, ransomware. So let's go to the question number six. So question number six is a technician is replacing the processor in a desktop computer prior to opening the computer. The technician wants to ensure the internal components are protected. So which of the following safety procedures would best protect the components in the PC? So choose two for below options. So option A is utilizing an EST strap. Option B is disconnecting the computer from the power source. Option C is placing the PSU power supply unit in an anti-static bag. Option D is ensuring proper ventilation. Option E is removing dust from the ventilation fans. Option F is ensuring equipment is grounded. So let's check the correct answer for these questions. So there are two options option A and B as are the correct answer. So option A is utilizing an ESD strap. Option B is a disconnecting the computer from the power source. So let's move to the next question. Question number seven. Question number seven is a user wants to set up a speech recognition on a PC in which of the following window settings 
tools can the user enable these options? Option A is the language, option B is the system, option C is the personalizations, option D is the easy of access. So let's check the correct answer for these questions. And the correct answer for this question is A language. So let's move to the next question, question number eight. Question number eight is a user reports that antivirus software indicates a computer is infected with viruses. The user thinks this happened while browsing the internet. The technician does not recognize the interface with which the antivirus message is presented. So which of the following is the next step the technician should take? Option A is to shut down the infected computer and swap it with another computer. Option B is to investigate what the interface is and what trigger it to pop up. Option C is a process with initiating a full scan and removal of the viruses using the presented interface. Option D is a call the phone number display in the interface of the antivirus removal tool. So let's check the correct answer for this question. And the correct answer for this question is option C. Proceed with initiating a full scan and removal of the viruses using the presented interface. So let's move to the next question, question number 9. Question number 9 is a technician found that an employee is mining cryptocurrency on a work desktop. The company has decided that this action violated its guidelines. Guidelines. So which of the following should the update to reflect this new requirement? Option A is MDM, option B is a ULA, option C is a IRP, option D is a AUP. So let's check the correct answer for this question. And the correct answer for this question is D AUP. So let's move to the last question for this part, question number 10. An organization is centralizing support functions and requires the ability to support a remote user's desktop. So which of the following technologies will allow a technician to see the issues along with the user? Option B is a RDP, option B is a VNC, option C is a SSH, option D is a VPN. So let's check the correct answer for this question. And the correct answer for this question is option B, VNC. So this part has been completed for the series. So if you like this video, don't forget to subscribe the channel. So I will upload next part shortly. Thanks for watching. Thank you.